from the beginning, the X-Men movies have occupied a strange place in the modern pantheon of comic book movies, where they're basically the consistent also-ran of the modern 21st century superhero scene, but are treated as this meaningful, venerable franchise, even though when you get right down to it, out of nine movies, only three of them were any good, and that's if we're being generous and pretending Part 2 still holds up, which it does not. In terms of influence and level of success, oh, this thing was a monster-sized smash hit, so now everything in the genre has to emulate it, the common ancestor of the modern age of superhero movies is Sam Raimi's Spider-Man. Because it came out a year or so beforehand, it's popular to say the first X-Men movie paved the way for Spidey's success by being the first big Marvel movie slash the comeback for comic book movies after Batman and Robin, but it wasn't. Blade was, but you know, god forbid we give the black guy any credit. Laid out end to end, it feels genuinely incredible that this series ran as long as it has. The first one is barely good enough for its time and nigh unwatchable today. The second one is decent but doesn't hold up. Pot 3 is fucking garbage. The first Wolverine is somehow worse. First Class was the good one. Wolverine 2 is almost good. Days of Future Past is a fucking snooze. Apocalypse was a goddamn dumpster fire. And while Deadpool was pretty darn great, part of that greatness was hanging a giant lampshade on how little it has to do with the other goddamn X-Men movies. So yeah, that's basically two good movies and they're both exceptions and outliers within the rest of the franchise. The majority of them are either dull or dismal, and they have all the same recurring problems. They take themselves way too goddamn seriously without having any reason to, they zero in on one or two characters, usually these two, and shove the rest of what should be an ensemble cast off to the sidelines, they tend to have surprisingly generic action scenes despite near limitless potential to do more offered by the premise and the characters, and speaking of squandered potential, holy fucking shit, have these movies consistently taken one of the most vibrant, visually arresting universes in the entire medium of comics and reduced it down into grim, bleak, dreary-looking sludge. And when they do try to lighten it up and have some fun, it all ends up looking like a fucking mid-90s UPN show. For a series that long, that is an abysmal track record. I mean, sure, the Fast and Furious movies didn't really figure out how to be good until a few movies in, but they kept it up after that. The X-Men franchise pretty much stood around with its dick in its hand until a totally new director took a totally different approach with a completely revamped cast, and the studio's response to that was, hey, that was great, so let's follow it by going right back to the shitty version we were making before. They even brought back the singularly mediocre talents of Brian Singer, because, you know, everybody loved that fucking Jack and the Beanstalk movie so goddamn much, and yet they keep making a shit ton of money off these things. Sure, Apocalypse didn't do all that hot, but Deadpool banked so much coin it really didn't matter. So while the Fantastic Four are probably gonna wind up back over at Marvel just in time for Robert Downey Jr. to decide, ah, hey, you know what, I think I got enough money now, we're probably staring down the barrel of a bunch more of these. Especially since X-Men, Ice Age, and the fucking Chipmunks movies are pretty much the only things Fox has managed to make stick over the last 15 years of movie making. And not only will they keep making these, people will keep defending them. I'm sure there's a fuck ton of you right now, not even waiting for the end of the episode, to jump down to the comments and tell me I'm wrong and evil and stupid, or ask how much Disney is paying me to spread this propaganda. And for the record, kids, I don't like it any more than you do that the only outfit that's consistently good at making top quality superhero movies is a fucking Disney subsidiary, but that's the world we've got. And that's really the strangest thing about the X-Men movies as a cultural touchstone. They're not good, but apart from X-Men 3 and the first Wolverine, they aren't really train wrecks either. They're just kind of bland, blasé, mediocre, dated, disposable movies. I mean, some bad movies are so singularly catastrophically terrible, such brazenly mounted, proudly awful things, that you can kind of understand why they might accrue a passionate fanbase, however inexplicable. You can kind of imagine some sort of off-kilter psyche that might fall in love with something like Jupiter Ascending, or Battlefield Earth, or Batman v Superman, but the fuck X-Men movies? I don't know, to me, dying on this particular hill feels like ordering minute rice as your last meal. But I also kind of understand it, because what makes the X-Men franchise mediocre instead of flat out bad is that it did some things right, and it did one thing rightest of all. This fucking guy. To be clear, there are other good things in these movies. Hugh Jackman was a legit discovery. Zeroing in on gay equality as the central marginalized civil rights analogy was inspired. Opening the otherwise forgettable first movie with young Magneto in fucking Auschwitz was pretty much throwing down the gauntlet on how seriously they planned to take this shit, even though they didn't really end up following it through. And naked blue Rebecca Romaine probably drop-kicked more viewers into puberty than any other superhero character since Catwoman. But in terms of why the series looms so much larger than it otherwise deserves to, particularly for the millennial generation, I really do think it all comes down to Patrick Stewart as Professor Xavier. Here's the thing, the X-Men movies manage to ignore, reject, flub, fail at, and occasionally outright piss all over almost everything that made these characters and stories worth adapting in the first place. Their world feels small and drab, the characters look, act, or both like pared down boring versions of themselves, the aesthetic is ugly as sin even compared to the comics at their worst, they weirdly tame, sterile, and sexless even by the standards of other PG-13 studio fare, and especially considering the material they're supposed to be working from, and apart from first class, they all just keep rehashing the same conflict. All true 
through all problems, but what's also true is they unquestionably nailed the central escapist, in the most literal sense of that word, fantasy of Professor Xavier and his school for the gifted. The idea that if you were a young person who was different, strange, unusual, didn't fit in, or even actively hated, persecuted, or abused in whatever town or family circumstance had placed you in, that you could find your way to a posh, lovely boarding school where Captain Picard, you know, the leader of the cuddly, safe, politically correct, non-confrontational version of Star Trek, would reassure you and tell you that your weird differences actually made you a special, wonderful snowflake who was actually better than the normals and maybe even a goddamn superhero? Yeah, you bet your sweet fucking ass that shit stabbed right the hell down to the emotional nerve center, lodged there, and broke the goddamn handle off for a shitload of audiences, especially a generation of millennials who were already having it drilled into their heads that the only pathway to a livable future was to escape whatever backwater they'd been born into for the tolerant, accepted promised land of some form of higher collegiate education. Whatever these movies did wrong, they turned I'm Professor Charles Xavier, welcome to my school for gifted youngsters, into this generation's tomorrow from Annie. And when something connects like that, of course people are going to fall all over themselves trying to overlook or justify how much the rest of it doesn't work. So yes, it's understandable why pop culture has taken its fucking time getting over the X-Men movies, but it still needs to get the fuck over them. Let this franchise die as it's still stumbling around today and resurrect under wholly new conditions. Because what should be one of, if not the most fertile and vibrant properties in the superhero genre, if not science fiction period, has been jogging in goddamn quicksand since 1999, and we're all the poorer for that. And nothing proves that more than the fact that they fucked up what should have been their best storyline, have made a big deal out of taking a mulligan on it, but have already demonstrated that they're probably gonna fuck it up all over again. And I'll explain what I mean by that next time.